Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, time for another Ruby Blind Commentary. But before we get into that, let me just say, since this is the first video I upload on this channel for the new year, Happy New Year everyone, let's hope 2017 is a good one. And sorry it's a bit late, I know I, I, I wasn't able to get this out on Saturday like I normally do. That's because of New Year's celebrations, the holiday and whatnot, and uh, I wanted to get it out uh, last night, but I just didn't have time, I was tired when the celebrations were over and it was really late. So I just put it off another night and uh, get into it now even though it's still pretty late. But I mean, <laughs> I'll stay up for it and uh, you'll probably be seeing this video about, uh, I don't even know, early morning hours. Uh, <laughs> but it's worth it, I mean, this way you don't have to wait even longer to see my reaction and I don't have to wait any longer to actually watch this episode because I really want to see it. It's episode 7 of volume 4, Punished. And, uh, that's an interesting title. Uh, I'm expecting we'll be, we'll be picking up where we left off, and probably with both things we left off on. Because Punished makes me think we're gonna see what happens next for Weiss. Uh, that she'll be punished, because, I mean, obviously what happened in the last episode. And that's obviously going to have repercussions, and, uh, yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> Jacques is not going to be happy with her, and, uh, I'm eager to see what he does. I'm sure it's going to be pretty bad, and this is just going to, uh, put an even bigger wedge between the two of them, and I'm sure the brother will be involved somehow, and I'm kind of expecting that Weiss is going to end up, uh, moving closer to General Ironwood, that maybe she'll enroll in Atlas, and, uh, just sort of start to learn from him because uh, they've had him show up and be a supportive role for her uh, twice now this season. So that just makes me think that there's going to be some sort of uh, maintained connection there. Uh, and uh, yeah, then there's the other thing, obviously. <laughs> Crow and Tyrion, where we left off. The exciting stuff. Uh, that cliffhanger. <laughs> It didn't get me as bad as it got some people. I mean, I was still pretty mad to see the episode end, the, end there, but uh, some people were really, really disappointed with how that just cut off right when it was getting good. Uh, but uh, yeah, Tyrion and Crow. I'm eager to see how the fight goes. I would expect that, that Crow is going to be able to just fend Tyrion off. Uh, and I mostly say that because it just feels too early to see Crow get defeated. Because uh, there's a lot of build-up around Crow. He's like this character who we just haven't seen the full extent of what he can do yet, and every little revelation about him is treated with such just... I don't even know what the right word I, I want to say here is, but it's just like so much time has been put into building up this character and making him just seem so awesome and becoming a favorite of so many people. He's not really one of my favorite characters, but I do get the appeal. Uh, because of that, I don't I don't think we're just going to have a new villain just suddenly take him out or defeat him or anything. Uh, because, I, I mean, it would be a good way to show that the villains are serious and all, but... Uh, I don't know. It, it, it just feels like it would be too much. And we kind of already did that with, with him uh, just kind of mercilessly beating Team Ranger and all. Uh, I don't think we need to have him take down Crow as well. But uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Let's just go ahead and get this started. Okay. And here we go. Just pretending to a happy ending. Here's glory. 
still not expecting we'll see Blake or Yang again this episode, though maybe. It has been a while now since we've seen Yang. It'd be cool to check in with other villains, too. See more Salem. Starting with Oscar. Oscar, supper's almost ready. What are we having? Doesn't matter. You're eating it. <laughs> I never agreed to these terms. It's part of the living under my roof contract. Read the fine print, then come wash up. We have to leave. Oscar. Oscar. I've decided you're not real, so you might as well just give up. I understand how you're feeling. I went through the same So are we going to explain this? It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. I can assure you, you are perfectly safe. I'm talking to a voice in my head. I didn't say you were normal. I said you were safe. There's quite a significant Shut difference. Shut up! You think this is funny? It's not. We are in complete agreement on that matter, I promise you. Believe me, I wish this weren't the case. But as I've told you, our aura, our souls are combined. Oh. How'd that happen? I'm listening to you. Have you ever been to Haven? I told you I'm not going, and I told you I'm done listening. Do you think you could describe the headmaster's office? No. Why would I know that? I've never seen. Try. Right now. <sighs> it's probably. It's. Sodom colored with a large mahogany desk. There's a small table and chairs in the corner for guests with a tea set that I I gave him. Why did I say that? <laughs> well, why do I know that? Why did I say that? Because I helped build Yeah, that's got to be pretty weird. And the tea set was a gift to the man running it now. If you don't believe me, you can look it up. If I recall, your aunt has several books on Mistral downstairs. I'm certain you could find a picture in one of them. That... that's right. I must have seen it in a picture. Oscar. Stop talking to me! I have a grave responsibility to uphold. We both do. I never agreed to anything. No, you didn't. And neither did I at first. But you do have an opportunity. For what? Greatness, hopefully. Greatness in knowing that when the world needed help, you were the one to reach out your hand. It won't come without hardship, without sacrifice. But I know you don't want to live the rest of your life working as a farmhand in Misra. Okay, so we're in Mistral. So you just decided to read my thoughts? I... Well... They're our thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be... Pretty weird. Oscar! Supper time! I better see clean hands. And twice. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Do you have any idea what your stunt cost us? 
I... And don't think I'm just talking about Lien here. Our reputation. Our... Our... Uh -huh. I want to leave. <laughs> yeah. I beg your pardon. I said I want to leave. I don't want to stay here anymore. I don't want to stay in Alice anymore. Young lady, I don't give a damn about what you want. This isn't about you. This is about the Schnee family name and your apparent insistence on dragging it through the mud. I have done nothing but fight to uphold the honor of my family name. A name that you married into. Oh. So we got that out there and slap. <laughs> this behavior of yours is incredibly disappointing. You couldn't possibly understand. A lot of people already speculated that he had married into the family. You think running off like your sister is going to make the Schnee name stronger? You're wrong. Siding with her only divides us. You're already pretty divided, I'd say. With anyone. I'm doing what I feel is right, and that does not include wasting my time up here with these clueless people in Atlas. The Schnee family legacy isn't yours to leave. It's mine. And I'll do it as a huntress. No, you won't. You're not leaving Atlas. You're not to leave the manor grounds unless I specifically allow it. You are going to remain here, out of sight and out of trouble, until you and I come to an agreement on your future. What? Your presupposition that you can simply have whatever it is you want is a clear sign of our failure as parents. <laughs> but from now on, I'll be giving you the full attention you require, starting by keeping you where I can see you. Love the symbolism of the mirror in the you background. You can't just keep me from leaving. I can, and the staff here will make sure of it. So now I'm just your prisoner? You are my daughter. You're a child. And children are grounded when they misbehave. This is only going to make things worse, Father. People will ask questions. They'll want to know why the heiress to the Schnee Dust Company is suddenly nowhere to be found. Which is why you are no longer the heiress to the Schnee Dust Company. Okay, I called it. Excuse me? Clearly, the trauma you endured at the fall of Beacon was too much for you. Which is why you Whitley time. revoked your claim to the company and its earnings. Passed them on to your brother Whitley. It was probably pretty obvious, but called it. It's time to wake up and face reality. Yes, sister? <laughs> oh. Did you know about this? <laughs> of course he did. About what? You never liked Winter. You never liked me. But you've been nothing but supportive since the moment I came back. If being kind to my big sister is some sort of crime, then I suppose I'm guilty. You wanted this to happen. It's foolish not to do as father asked. <sighs> can't believe you. Don't worry, Weiss. The Schnee family name is in good hands. Yeah, you're the only one surprised here, Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> Love the animation in this uh, scene. Poor Weiss. Time to escape. 
Probably. But back to this. <laughs> As I live and breathe, Crow Bronwyn. <laughs> A true huntsman has entered the fray. I don't know. This guy's weird. <laughs> that reaction. Look, pal, I'm not sure who you are. But you need to leave my niece alone. <laughs> Why, friend, my name is Tyrion. And I'm afraid that is not possible. My assignment from Her Grace was to retrieve this young girl. So, that is what I must do. One does not upset the Queen. Queen? Salem. Who? <laughs> I think we've had enough talk now, don't you? You took the words right out of me. Oh, wow. This is gonna be awesome. God. Oh. Oh, and it's a gun. Of course it's a gun. Well, that's going to be difficult, actually. <laughs> Come on, let's see the sight. <laughs> nice. Oh, just getting some punches in there. <laughs> Unlike Ruby, he can do the hand to hand. There we go. Or well, at least sort of. Well, since you had an awesome soundtrack tune. Ah. Ruby, do you wish to be taken? No, but mm -hmm. I won't stand by and watch someone get hurt. Is her aura already back to normal, or was it not fully depleted? Okay. Well, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> oh. Well, go Ruby. But he's... Yeah. Well, they did ward him off, so it's kind of right, but... Are you okay? That's gotta be some kind of poisonous. Help me find 
He just grazed me. <laughs> Who was that guy? How did you get here? Why are people after Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> the questions. What's going on? <sighs> What's your favorite fairy tale? <sighs> okay. <laughs> So are we going to introduce yet another fairy tale, or...? Because I'm not sure how the Maiden story is connected to Salem, unless she is the Winter Maiden, as some people think. Which I don't really buy into, but maybe. Uh, okay. So yeah, that was an excellent episode. Really, really good stuff. Possibly the best of the volume, though I did also really love the Yang episode, though that might just be personal bias. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this was great, and I enjoyed all three scenes. Uh, it was good to finally get some answers in the whole Oscar Ozpin thing, and uh, just finally get some sort of understanding of what that's all about. And it is pretty much what a lot of people had expected, that Ozpin has sort of come somehow to possess Oscar, and uh, they've sort of melded together, their auras are connected, and from the sounds of, thing, of things, uh, Ozpin has been through this before, so it's possibly some kind of cycle. Uh, I guess it's kind of like the Maidens, where they where it passes on to a random person because uh, I mean it's clear that Oscar has no idea who Ozpin is or anything uh, so I guess it's like that this sort of power that goes from person to person and uh, now they're just joined and their thoughts are connected and uh, <laughs> Ozpin wants Oscar to do something for him and they're in Mistral so Good to finally have information there. Uh, then we had Weiss, and uh, it was a really beautiful scene just in how it was shot. I really love Weiss's house. It's got to be one of the just more eye-catching, appealing-looking sets that they have on Ruby. And uh, her room is really beautiful, and that mirror loved it in there in the background just for the Snow White uh, <laughs> for that kind of imagery and uh, it was about what I would expect just Jock being a complete ass and uh, we did learn what many people had already correctly predicted that he is in fact uh, that he married into the Shni family that uh, it's his wife who is uh, <laughs> the, the Shni the one who has the bloodline which uh makes sense because I mean I uh, I just can't see Jacques actually being <laughs> being the one who does like all the summoning stuff and all that that just doesn't work for me I, I can't see him really fighting at all I mean maybe eventually we'll see him in action but I, I don't think he can do any of that so uh, yeah the whole Schnee bloodline that apparently has all these glyph powers yeah that's not him uh, and, uh, yeah, good to know that, good to see that. Though it does make me wonder even more where Weiss's mother is and what she's doing and what she has to say about all this. Has she just completely deferred everything to him? Is she just that far gone? I mean, we know she, like, drinks a lot and all that, but, uh, she has to have some sort of grip on this still, especially since she is the technical head of the family in, in terms of being the one who the Schnee line passed through and all that. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. It, it, it's not good there. And it does look like uh, Weiss is planning an escape or something, which is good and makes sense. I mean, I, I, I don't see them really keeping her hostage in her own home because, uh, yeah, she is the one who does have all the cool powers. She can summon, like, Big Grim to come do stuff for her. So, uh, that's going to be difficult. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, Whitley. I totally called that in the last one at the end. Uh, that we'd be doing something with the inher inheritance. And 
Weiss no longer being the one to play the part of part of heir, and uh, yeah, saw that coming. And Whitley is a scumbag, just like everyone thought. I mean, people were saying, "Oh, he hasn't done anything yet," but now it's pretty clear this is not a good kid. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. Then we had the big scene, and I was correct to say that they would ward off uh, Tyrion, but Crow also did kind of get uh, taken down a bit. I mean, he's clearly poisoned or something now, which uh, does actually make a lot of narrative sense, because, I mean, we had a really awesome fight, and it didn't end with anyone dominating anyone, so no one was made to look weak. And instead, we uh, we warded off the villain for later, while also taking Crow out of the picture for uh, at least probably the rest of the volume. I don't know. I mean, I don't think he's going to die from this, obviously, but uh, he'll probably be unable to fight for the rest of uh, yeah, the rest of the volume. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that fight was awesome. Definitely the best one in the volume so so far. It it was it was intense. It was awesome. Music was great, and just the action was really cool. I mean, we didn't get to see much scythe stuff from Crow, but it, it didn't matter. It was still just really cool and really intense. And Ruby was great in it too. How she contributed, though. In the last episode, we made a big deal about showing her aura get depleted, and then already she's back on her feet, fighting in the thick of it, and. Uh, all that, which just seems dangerous. Though, I mean, it's hard to really say with this show just how fast Aura does repl replenish and all that, because it, it seems like sometimes they're able to recover pretty fast. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Tyrion got his tail cut off. <laughs> or, well, part of it, at least. And, uh, Good to see Ruby get that in there, and uh, we ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger there with Crow asking Ruby a quite familiar question. Are we going to introduce yet another legend to go with the Silver Eyed Warriors and the Maidens, or is this going to be tied to one of those? I mean, not going to be the Warriors, since obviously Ruby's already heard it, and she hadn't heard it before, so it's not going to be her favorite fairy tale. But, uh, we've been playing a lot with that whole theme of different fairy tales and legends, so, uh, I mean, it's pretty much what the entire series is based around. So, I'm assuming it's going to be something new entirely, and I'm excited to really learn more about what uh, Crow has to say, because I assume he'll be talking about Salem here. And, uh, yeah, that could be... That could be really inf really interesting information to learn. Uh, anyway, super excited for the next one. It's going to be really pretty cool, probably. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll probably check in with uh, Yang or Blake or something, uh, since it's been a while now. Or I hope we get at least some of this stuff continued. I'd like to see more Weiss. I'd, like to see I'd definitely like to hear more from Crow and uh, all that, since that does seem a bit more immediate right now. But uh, I guess we'll see. Anyway, I hope you liked the commentary. Let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.